And now we get to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Under the newsletter tab, you'll see the Tiger Forex report by our man, Teddy. You can check that out for only $97 a month. you got issues each week on Monday morning. Updates throughout the week when warranted. As each newsletter we have, folks, 30-day money-back guarantee. you got nothing to risk. And it is a great time, man, as we've got things rocking yet again as we talk to our man, Teddy. Teddy Kegstad. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning. Lots of good moves and a little bit of divergence Ooh. coming up today. What do you want to talk about first? I want to talk about it all, man. Where do we kick things off? Um, so maybe maybe on the yield conversation, we got some private payrolls, of course, this morning. Yields, you've you've taught us so well. Um, you know, such an important component, of course, with where currency drive. Seems like, at least uh, in the U.S., that the trend is we got some higher yields, man. We got wage data that is accelerating. We have, you know, some Fed speak out there today. The conversation seems to be shifting yet again with maybe less cuts than the market's looking for. And we got the 10-year now above 4.4%. Maybe we kick it off there. Well, I have to say, I guess I got it right, huh? You know, for months, <laughs> for months, I've been going against the news and the media and everybody calling for, you know, multiple rate hikes. At one point, they were looking for seven or cuts, rather, you know, and then it got dropped down to finally three, which then got pushed out to the summer. And now we're going towards and I've been saying, I'm like, you know, before you get too gung ho on all these rate cuts, you know, you got to follow the economic numbers. And the reality is inflation never left and it's kicking its heels up in a big way. And I think it's going to really come roaring back over the course of the next like six months for sure and if that's the case you know a quarter point let's say that they even uh, do two cuts we've had this conversation a point a cut one already, already a quarter point for sure is factored in the market already but almost two qu uh, quarter points which means almost a half a point if that's the case we only really have we've already set the ceiling which means that you if you wanted to refinance you got your shot already you're not going to yeah. get a better shot you know so to get back to that reality and that means that higher yields lower pricing you know it's going to be a big deal it's going to probably shore up the dollar a little bit and that's you know without the you know it's just being market driven that's without the fed doing anything you know and the fact that they're becoming less likely to cut as much as was originally expected by the consensus, that means globally that the central banks are all going to be looking at that. It's going to have an impact on a lot of currencies. It means now like for instance, the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, you know, oil is making making uh, new highs. Yields are now uh, co going higher once again. Well, what's the BOJ going to do even if they intervene? How much of an impact is it going to have on the yen? Not much. Not unless they go on a really aggressive tear with raising uh, rates, and I, if that happens, the empire is definitely crumbling, you know, over there. So, and I don't think that's going to be a, um, a topic of our conversation in the future. You know, I chuckle a little bit, man, but you've had some great calls, outstanding kudos, man, because this market, as it plays out, it is pretty remarkable how the market has gotten so far ahead of where it deserved to be and hindsight of course is 2020 but it is pretty remarkable that as we continually shift forward three and six months the conversation just keeps changing and those cuts keep getting pushed back you had rafael bostic saying one cut at the end of the year right now and like you said i mean where do we go from there man and that wage data this morning 10 percent for job changers were still above five percent for people staying in the same job and that's off of numbers over the last couple of years you know, you're doing 7%, you're doing 8 and now you're still doing 5 and those 5% numbers are based off of the numbers of last year, which are up 12 or 13% over the prior two years from that. And so it's it's pretty remarkable. Um, we got some hot jab jobs data a little bit today and we get that big number on Friday. But yeah, and uh, I appreciate you jumping to the yen. That was going to be the next one. We are now above. I got it up right now on the Thinkorswim platform as I'm talking to you. We're almost pushing highs that we saw a week ago when i was talking to you and you had the drop off from that high mm -hmm. of 15197 about we dropped all the way to 15102 on my chart and we are right now back at 15192 that entire drop off gets wiped out for people looking to the yen i know you've given us some of your analysis you always do a great job in the tiger forex report man i always make sure i check that out on monday mornings for people watching the yen, I know it's an important component. Pretty remarkable what gold has been doing, even with the yen where it is, but obviously more components in gold than just the yen. Um, but what are your feelings kind of risk-reward right now as we're approaching some of the weakest levels we've seen? And you laid out the case, but any price levels for those traders out there looking at the yen? 
Uh, yeah, I can see a spiking around the 153 half area. Um, right now, today, we're making new highs. Now, there is a little bit of divergence going on today. You know, um, you got to realize that yields are, are ri rising, oil is rising, but the dollar index is pulling back today. You know, the euro is up, yeah. you know. So, I mean, and this is off of the, you know, it's, I look at it as a profit taking move. You know, the trend, no matter what, you're coming off of new highs in the dollar index, meaning new lows in the euro US dollar off of, of yesterday. You know, so what I think you're seeing is a profit taking move. So I'd be careful. You know, I said this before like, um, I, I'm bullish the US dollar yen. I'm looking to buy breaks on it. I'd be very careful selling above this area. You know, I'd be a happier seller at a 153 half than I would be at right now at 150, you know, 190. 152 nice. you know I think you you can get squeezed that way you know if you're gonna try and fade that market I would be very cautious with that if you're gonna do that try and highball it more than lowball it you know um, and as far as you know being a bull I'd look to buy breaks I'd be careful buying in the area where you're at because you're in the chop zone so you're, you're, you're it's all about your time value of money there where you can be up a little down a little you're going nowhere with that position you know what I mean so uh, if we get back down towards the 150 area, and especially if yields are still strong and oil's high, it's a great buy. You know, that's where you want to look at it. Then you can look at it as a profit taking correction and look to buy, you know, for some solid support there. And then maybe nice. trade in a range. I think we're going to be probably trading in a range with the yen between 148 and 153 over the next few months. Unless we have a major move in interest rates or oil. So if we see oil above 100, you know, getting into 110, and if you see yields really pushing, you know, higher levels, well, then you could see the yen up at 155, 156, or even 158 in, over the next few months. Then you're going to probably have BOJ intervention. But once again, how, what is kind of impact is that really going to have? Yeah. It won't have can. any, especially with, I'm sorry, with ours, you know, being pushed out with our Fed. No, I was just going to say, you can't be bigger than the market sometimes, like you say, man, no matter what they do, if the forces are behind it. Uh, I love the way that you give us those exact clear levels, for, um, Teddy. It's great, man. And you jump to crude. I just want to get a little take, man, crude. Talk about higher prices, man. We've been talking about it a bit. 85.77. Um, you gave some of those numbers right mm -hmm. there in, in the yen. And I know you even last week, you walked us through so well the fundamentals of that crude market. You referenced it right now, talking about the yen, the dollar, etc. Um, but any price levels for the crude traders out there as we're looking at a higher highs and higher lows basically since the end of last year right now? Well, today we hit our upside target number one. We had the critical resistance zone that I had in the Forex report that we were bobbling in the last week and a half. Over the past few sessions, we've gone from the bottom of that band all the way up to the top part and breached it yesterday with a close above it. And now we hit this target. It's a strong area. If we get above one, basically 86 bucks, we're going up to 91, baby. I love it. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report. You heard the clarity that Teddy delivers, man. Teddy, thank you so much for the nine minutes, man. I look forward to talking to you next week, brother. Take care, Tommy. See you next week. Have a great one. Folks, we'll be right back. Stay tuned.